want to emulate PlayStation 2 games on your Android phone or tablet, this is the video for you. Low end, mid and high end devices, this video has you covered. So for all your emulation tips and guides, this is it. And all, you know, the resources that you need that I'll be showing you, there'll be a pinned comment. So feel free to you know look down there. Just want to say this video is for educational purposes only and I am not condoning piracy should legally own the games and the BIOS files that you use. So now let's get straight to it. So we're using the Never SX2 emulator and the performance is really, really good. For reference, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Fold 7, so a high-end device. But like I said, this guide will cover you for mid and low-end devices as well. So let's go ahead and download Never SX2. Open up your web, web browser, search for neversx2.org. Never SX2. Now, what you want to do is click download now. Click download the latest version. You'll say, you know, download. I've already got downloaded, so I'm going to ignore this. And we're good. Like, we're done in terms of downloading stuff via our web browser. There's a few other things that we need. If you open up your Google Play Store, you want to search for EX File Manager. This is a free utility and install this from ace mobile this is a great little file manager that allows you to extract any format it's really fast it allows you to access all the folders on your device so this is the recommended one if you have another file manager that you like to use feel free to use that one as well so you also need a bio file legally i cannot show you where to get that but if you google it honestly you can find it very easy and you'll need games as well you know the rom, the rom files again cannot legally show you you know where to get them but they're not hard to find and on the side note if you have any questions feel free to comment down below and i'll help you out with anything that you need okay so now that we've you know got the emulator let's go ahead and open up ex file manager and if you get an ad just we can skip this stuff and what you want to do you want to Let me change the color. Yeah. So you want to click this button right here. And then you want to go to internal storage. Next, what you want to do is go to your downloads folder. And now just open up your emulator. So if you click that, Click install. You ask you how to install package installer is fine. And now install the app. Will not take long. It is a very small application. Click done. We're not going to open it up here. We've got a bit of housekeeping to do. So you want to click this button again. Go to internal. Now here I would recommend creating a folder called games. You could put it somewhere else, possibly if you want to put it somewhere else. So you just click the three dots up here. Click that, click new, click folder, and then name it games in there. Create a folder called ROMs in there. Create a folder called PS2, which we are doing right now. PS2. In there, we're going to create one more folder. We're going to call it BIOS. Okay, so we'll put all our ROMs here, and we'll put the BIOS files in here. So let's go back 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 now go to downloads and first of all let's just install the bios file so if you if you have a zip file keep it pressed and you want to go down to here click more next you want to click extract to click ok now in the folder again depending on where you've got it from or how you've you know ripped it your you know have you probably have a different structure if you extract it. So I'm just going to go here, you know, select all these files, click copy, go back. Now I'm going to go to games, ROMs, PS2, BIOS, click paste. Now we're going to add our game as well. Then we're pretty much done. Click download. And I know it's the game, this one here, Crash Bandicoot Dash, which is Crash Bandicoot Rough of Cortex. I'm going to extract it the same way. Depending on how big your game is and 
depending on what device you have it may take a little longer to extract because you know especially after ps1 games were in the era of pretty big file sizes because of dvds so just a few more seconds and we should be all good to go Okay, that's all done. Open it up. Here we'll have two files. We can ignore the Vim's there one. Uh, we have a bin and a Q file. So we can just copy this whole folder. Copy. Just keep the folder or file press. Click copy in the bottom left here. Copy. And now go back to games, ROMs, PS2. And you want to click paste. Copy and pasting shouldn't take long as you saw, you know, flash storage. And we can go back. And now we're good to go. We can actually close this down. We can all just drag this onto the home screen, like so, and let's launch it up. So you'll you'll guide us through you know setting it up. Click next, next, and now depending on what type of device you have, like I said, I have a Samsung Galaxy Fold 7, which is a high-end device. The optimal safe defaults will work for me. If you have a lower end device, go for the fast unsafe defaults. But also optimal safe will work there for me. If you have like a notch area or some sort of cutout, you can say expand to cutout area, but you'll get it. You know, a bit will be cut out, and the rest of it aspect ratio you can change to widescreen if you want to play with widescreen. I like to pr prefer auto standard, which is the original way the games were you know, presented and you know made for. In theme, you can change it to light or dark. Totally up to you. I'll go follow system. For G GPU renderer, change this to Vulkan. This will get you the best performance. If you are on older devices and you do have issues with performance, change this back to OpenGL. But honestly, Vulkan most of the time will be fine. Upscale multiplier is how sharp the graphics will look. It's great because you can increase it this multiplier and your graphics will look fantastic really sharp but it has a negative impact on performance so i always recommend do 1x native get it working make sure you're happy with that particular game and then you can always come back and increase it you know i know 3x is you know works very well for me and it will look very good as well you can go all the way up to 8x really unless you're going into some of the really high resolution tablets you don't need that um, but you select that click next you want to import your bios so when you click this, you'll open up the built-in file manager. So you have to understand how to navigate that. And then we just go to games, ROMs, PS2, BIOS, and it's the large file. And it's being imported. And now you want to do game directories, click plus. When I go back to PS2. Click use this folder, click allow. So this will just scan the directory, click finish, and the game's appeared right there. We can launch the game up or we can do a few more things. So if you go to the menu button over here, which is also called a burger button, you want to go to controller settings. And here, if you have a touch screen, you can use the touch screen side. Just make sure touch screen controller view is your analog pad so both analog sticks appear and which port you want to show you probably be port one to be honest and you can do you know enable game vibration as well you can do in, uh, vibrate and press if you would like to everything else you can leave as is if you have an external controller connected i'll sh i'll actually create separate videos on how to set up different controllers feel free to let me know in the comments which ones you would like to see. But you can go here, click automatic mapping. If you have a controller connected, it will map it and you'll do a good job. And controller type, just select DualShock 2. But if you want to override a particular key, you want to customize it, one of the beauties of emulation, click the binding, press the key or the button on your, you know, your device, and then you'll map it. And that's it. Uh, again, if you want to do hotkeys, feel free to, you know, chain these as well. So great for quick saving, for example. You can go back and right now we're pretty much good to go if you do add more games just open this back up go scan for new games right now there's no cover art so let's add some cover art go to ps2 um the i mean your browser search for ps2 covers you'll be the github link i'll provide a link to this down in the comments in the pinned comment and scroll down 
and there'll be two links you can have a free decover or default cover i'll do default i'm going to launch the emulator click the burger button go to download covers and there's a default in there where we we want to delete uh, that paste this in click download there you go our covers have now downloaded if you want to change it to a grid view you can do that by selecting this button right here which is pretty cool as well and if you want a background you can go to download or change background i mean right there and apart from that we're pretty much good to go if you keep the game pressed you can go to game properties and if you need to change a specific game property uh, you know to essentially override it from the global you can do so you can change the gpu renderer uh, you know for this particular game uh, or if you increase the resolution scale decrease it maybe for something like god of war grand Turismo, you need to or lower it or you know increase it one last thing actually go back to settings app settings i'm going to scroll over go to memory cards go to create new card go to eight megabyte that's supported by all games that's the one i recommend you want to name it i'm just going to call it memory card one click create and now our memory card has been created and we just select it so we click over here click memory card one and we're pretty much good to go we can go back we can if you keep the game press you can change the cover image if you want to override a particular one uh, or you can load state as well but i'm just going to click the game and uh, missing bios image and did it not add it so let me just add it again click bios uh, let me Yeah, I'm having no issue with the BIOS file. Just give me one moment. Go to App Settings. Do, 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 do. BIOS, import BIOS. And I'm going to go to... And download... Let me select a different one. There we go. Okay. So I've just imported it from there but feel free to you know copy it over um, again I, that was just more of an issue on my end if i click the game now it launches up and if you need to access the menu you just essentially initiate the back button press on your device so for me swipe in now it can load state save state so if i if i want to save a state i can do it at any point and you'll load exactly to that particular part in the game and you can do you know toggle software render for example or patch codes as well but honestly i recommend using you know a game control like because as you can see there's not much space uh, you know you know you can customize this and change the control as well. And so if I do save state, save state one, let me show you how this works. I'll go exit game. So if I keep this pressed, load state, click that state, you'll go directly to that point. Developed by Travis. Where I was. Crash Bandicoot, the wrath of Cortex. how you set up the never sx2 emulator on your android device if you have any questions feel free to comment down below if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos and i'm probably just gonna play a minute or so of crash bandicoot rough of cortex great game i don't think i appreciated it as much as i do now uh <laughs> so it's the way things that you don't enjoy as much at the time i enjoyed it but it wasn't for my, in my eyes even now as good as the original free on playstation one but this was still a great game and twin sanity in its own right as well 
I used to always think if I move the analog stick, Crash. I can control Crash Bandicoot in there. I don't think it can. So as you can see, it's running really nice, even with a 3x multiplier, and it's looking really smooth as well. So you could put this into, ideally you would want to put this into landscape mode. What are you looking at? And then you would want to connect a game controller as well. Or my fold, I could unfold it. Let me know if you want to see some videos of performance as well. Because I'm going to be doing some stuff when the Samsung Trifold phone comes out. Looking like at the end of this month or at least announced at the end of this month. And probably available before the end of the year. I'm thinking about getting it. If I do, I think I'll do some performance videos on that as well. If you are hearing any synchronization delays with the audio, don't worry. Don't worry about that. That's just because I'm connected to my headphones. I do have that issue sometimes. Yeah, I ended up dying. So that is it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.